For the last semester, these students have been working over the Windhaven facility, uh, doing a storytelling project with the residents there. Uh, they've been bringing pictures from the Fortipat Iowa database and using those pictures to create stories with those residents. And then when we finished that part of the project, we worked together to create this little piece of theater you're about to see. We're really excited to be here and we're really grateful you're here with us this morning. So thanks very much. Enjoy the show. All of us are born with the ability to be creative. Every human is creative because we have the ability to both imitate and to imagine. Hi, my name is Greta Berghammer, and I am a professor emeritus from the University of Northern Iowa. My area is theater and theater education. Many of my senior friends were finding themselves in living situations where they were now caretaking for someone who was in some cognitive decline. And one of the things they shared with me is, we just don't have fun anymore. So I thought, okay, this is my superpower. This is my wheelhouse, finding ways to have fun that, don't, that doesn't necessarily use language. And so I did a little researching and I came upon this program out of Milwaukee called Time Slips. Dr. Ann Bastings, she was using some theater technique to build stories from visual images with seniors with a variety of abilities. And I just started percolating what this would look like here. All right, and uh, Timeless Journeys was born. I'm Matt Weedman, and I'm the instructor of this class. I teach here in the Department of Theater at UNI. Sometimes we expect people to come into our theaters, and like that's how we interact with the community. And to be like, well, no, actually, we can we can partner with people in the gerontology department and we can partner with people at the Western Home Community. And that's how we create education, how we create art, how we facilitate friendships and relationships and communication. That that just feels like so much more magical than just like we're gonna stick in this one space in this rarefied little air that we breathe and instead just go out and share the things that we're experiencing with as many people as we can. And I think one of the things that this project really underlines is that there are teachers everywhere if you're willing to just slow down, look, and listen. How many of us have had some relatives who have age with dementia? Yeah. People who are important to you? People that you were close to? When we think about that, and then we think about stepping into a space where we're dealing with people who we don't know, and we don't have that prior relationship, doesn't that change things really fundamentally? It certainly does for me. When we started this project, we all met in this room. We got our destination station, which is a big TV with a laptop keyboard. And we just talked about the project and we were honest about it. How many of you are scared to do this? How many of you are uncomfortable working with these people? It's exciting to like do this kind of project, but it's very nerve wracking. Yeah. Just like, How many of you feel a little nerve wracked by this project? Yeah. What are the anxieties that you feel? About? I think I started with kind of the perspective yeah, that most of society has, which is to not think about it as much as possible. A lot of us had the same experience of feeling a little trepidation and a little fear because we weren't super experienced with dementia as a whole and we weren't experienced with working with people with dementia. There was a lot of talk of like people aging with dementia not having a voice. And so I think my perspective going into it was to elevate and give them a voice because they do. And the idea that they don't have a voice is just simply not true. The generation of an imaginative story that may or may not be based on something that happened to someone was just as valuable, maybe more valuable, all right, than trying to ask someone who can't remember to remember. And once we remove that burden of a right answer, that's when like the creativity and the magic happens. Think about what it's like to live in that anxiety all the time of not being able to answer questions that people seem to think you should be able to answer. And to be able to be asked a question and, and, and to be given this gift of there is, the, the right answer is the answer that you came up with. My perspective shifted a lot, actually. Initially, it was a lot of the educational stuff that changed it, like when we went to the Dementia Simulation House. I fitted with these goggles and these gloves, and they went in, gave us a list of tasks to do. Logan, can you hear me? Yeah. 
I would like you to take I was so focused on like what what's going on in my headphones like what what's that noise um, that they like told me the the tasks and I had realized that I just completely was not paying attention to what they were saying I remembered like the first maybe first two out of like five tasks I got and as I'm walking around trying to figure out what the other tasks are I think I ended up doing other people's tasks so that was fun we learned a lot about like what it actually was and kind of the gradients of it and the fact that like it was a progressive disease so people can you know exist with on a spectrum with how they are at a given time God. vision being restricted on top of like hearing and all the other things we had um, can be very hard so I've learned like be patient I know it can be very very anxious for someone who's living with this so and they thought you that was one of the biggest things that came out of the Dementia Simulation House was asking those questions and figuring out like what makes life easier for them and what makes interactions that may otherwise be stressful a little bit less so for them. And then once I met people with dementia in Tallman Square, it was this interesting thing of like, they were honestly some of my favorite people to work with and I realized how much I had kind of relegated them to like a very specific experience into a very specific way of experiencing the world and that they were just as open to things as you know people who aren't aging with dementia are. I'm Heather Plukar. I'm the executive director at Humanities Iowa. Um, I've been there for almost 15 years. I think the perspective on dementia um, generally speaking is uninformed um, and the way that you learn to change your perspective is to spend time with that issue. You're ready for them to go? Yeah. 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 And college students having the ability to sit with these folks um, and communicate helps to change the perspective of dementia being an, an, an end story instead of maybe just part of a story. It doesn't have to be ugly. Um, and there can be some creativity in it that makes everybody comfortable with sort of facing a, a challenging subject. Lauren and I will just ask questions about the picture, um, like, to make up a story. Yeah. Just create when you're actually working with these individuals and, like, sitting down and talking to them, it's really easy. Um, it's just having a conversation. It, it's a lot of fun. The stories that they're coming up with are usually very fun and very joyful, and there's just very profound things that you kind of get along the way. I had a few pictures with kids running around in mud or shucking corn with their parents and they all just got to talk about, oh, those kids are lovely. I bet that one there's a real keeper. And then they just talk about their experiences and their lives. Yeah, I used to babysit all the others. There's kind of a stigma attached for an older adult to use their imagination. It seems silly, it's pointless, they're afraid of you know, seeming immature and that they won't come up with good ideas. The whole aspect of getting to work with the students and knowing that there is a purpose to it. They are helping them with a class assignment. There is going to be an end result. That is something that gave them purpose and allowed them to be more comfortable with the fact that they're using their imagination. There's no wrong answer. I couldn't help but notice the changes that happened to the university students. They didn't have to focus so much on the task because the, all of a sudden the senior citizens were asking them like, what are your goals? What is your life like? Where did you live? Um, do you have brothers and sisters? Do, you know, And all of a sudden there was a, kind of a trust between them. Do you think that maybe that's what's happening? This might actually be under official It wasn't a, this? here I am, there you are. It was truly a collaboration in conversation. Like the stuff's universal. It doesn't just apply to like the people who are near you in your age range or who are near you in other ways. It can kind of just apply across the board. All you have to do is just start a conversation and somewhere through it, you're going you're to find a friend or you're going to find a person to talk to. I went in very nervous being like, again, am I going to say the wrong thing? Am I going to make a connection? Because that was my biggest worry. Am I going to be able to make a connection with the people at the Western Homes? On our last day at the homes, she had told all of us that this project has made her feel closer to her husband. This song is about that, about the love she still has for him to this day, how he cared for people, and the impact he made on others. 
I wrote this for them. A big part of this project has been someone who has spoken with pretty much all of us about her husband and how he has impacted her on her life and how he has impacted her since he's passed. She would tell everyone the same story every visit. So I wrote a song about it for the show we were doing, um, and I named it Closer to You. Years are surely flown by, feels just like yesterday. We were together, talking about a day. You Our last day at the homes, she told us that this project has made her feel closer to her husband. So I wanted to pay tribute to not only her husband, but both of them and telling their story. I feel closer to you, oh my dear. Memories never leave, cause I know you're near. I looked up at one point, she had her hand on her chest and she was just, she got teary eyed. I got a little choked up, but she, she said she very much loved it. We've had discussions in class where we've talked about the thought of us passing away or people around us passing away or big changes in our lives. Hearing and seeing this person, how brightly she can be when we ask her questions and tell stories with her, it's not only a blessing, but also a bit of an encouragement that if someone like this can get to meet someone so wonderful and then lose them, but still get to have that spark of wonder and joy with everything they do, I think we can too. This was a lot of fun from beginning to end, and I really enjoyed it. Working with these people was one of the best parts of my week. It consistently was something that I looked forward to, and it was something that I would talk to people about all the time, and I would really try to impress on them, like, no, this was awesome. I spent, we made up this whole story. All we did was look at a picture, and then we spent like an hour just talking about this random picture, and then there's this social group, and this guy has like three girlfriends, and they all know each other somehow, and then he has a friend that has a dad that has all this stuff going on in his life. He should be working right now, but he's not. He's looking at a book, and in that book are pictures of pretty- It was just this really great experience, and it was something that was mutually beneficial for both of us. Louis is smiling because he didn't tell his wife, Barbara, where he was going. She knows. It's the most fantastic thing in the world to see these students, you know, and, and to watch these students grow from trepidation and anxiety to excitement and joy and to watch them take the experiences that they had. Just telling stories and interacting with other people and to turn it into a piece of art that's based on those experiences. It's just like, I don't know what you could do that's better. Like, it feels joyful. It feels powerful. I'm just excited that we got to do it. This has been a time for connection through intergenerational friendships, using the arts, creating and crafting stories to last a lifetime along the way. There's something to this that's not just an academic exercise, and it's not just about some sort of esoteric goal of learning. It's like we're doing something that impacts our lives. We're doing something that we're directly watching impact the lives of other people. and. The effect that we can do that and then carry that into other spaces to tell the story of what we did, that feels like it's this exponential growth of experience and knowledge and wisdom and happiness and joy and storytelling and creativity. It's kind of rare to get to experience that and I wish everyone could have that type of experience so we can take it out from sitting there with your hands in your lap passively trying to learn stuff and instead just really like go into a community.